Okay, so we're recording. So today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to wrap up reference directions. That is the passive sign convention and the laws of interconnection. Basically, KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, KVL. Okay. So note that if you have any questions, please post questions on the forum. And the link to the forum is off of the book's website, but it's very easy to remember. So let me see. Let me just, oh, actually I have the mouse here. So I can just do this. Let's copy that guy. I'll just paste it in here. And there's a link to the forums. Okay, so recall that we stopped at uh, the passive sign convention. So actually, we didn't do the passive sign convention. I'm sorry. We discussed or we stopped at sign conventions. Okay. So now, what we will do is consider the two terminal black boxes from the book that is from figure 1.3 so consider the two terminal black boxes from figure 1.3 in the book that is if you recall our discussion of sign conventions, there are actually four possibilities for the direction of voltage and current. So this is some element N, so N1 I call it, so it could be this one, okay? Or it could be this. Let's call these terminals A, B, A, B, or it could be, so let's call this A, let's call this B, or it could be this. V3. I3 or it could be this. V4, I4. Now historically current was considered to be carried by positive charges. And it was customary to define the power. Uh, oops, let's call this for C and D. So we define down there. So it was customary. So two points. Uh, historically, current was considered to be carried by positive charges and number two was uh, customary to consider a, uh, consider power entering the black box or the two terminal element positive. Okay, so based on this, if you think about it, then, I mean, uh, based on what these two points, since charges flowing, positive charges flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, lose energy, and this lost energy here should be gained by the black box here. Therefore, um, basically, it means that 
the sign convention for positive power entering N1 should be of either A or B. And this leads to the definition of the passive sign convention, which is uh, very important in the sense uh, the passive sign convention is what is used even when, or the passive sign convention of the ref associated reference direction, definition 1.2 from the book, is what is used to even write voltage current or charge flux, charge voltage relationships. So this is basically the associated reference direction or called passive sign convention. Okay, and I'll most of the time use the words passive sign convention. So basically it says whenever, again this definition is in the book but I want to repeat it because it is so important, the reference direction oops, for current I in a two terminal, we'll see in the next chapter that this is valid for multi-terminal elements as well, in black box, is in the direction of the reference voltage drop, V, That is, like for example, the current here entering is in the direction of the reference voltage drop. So is here as well. This is actually a consequence of KCL also, as we will uh, see shortly. And basically both V is positive and I is positive. It implies we use a positive sign in any expression, not only power, that, oops, relates voltage to current. Otherwise, we use a negative sign, okay? Now, Specifically with respect to power, recall from classical mechanics, now with respect to power, recall from classical mechanics that power is defined as the rate of doing work but we know from the chain rule, that is, this can be written as dw dq, sometimes I don't know why I'm seeing the dw dq, okay, the control thing is gone, times dq dt, so this is the chain rule. But we know from our discussion in the previous lecture, that this is V times I. So power with the passive sign convention is VI, okay? This is, and the unit of power is the watt, abbreviated W, okay? And this is true, like even if you have a complicated like device such as a graphics processing unit, if the current entering is I, the voltage drop is V, then the power consumed by the GPU is plus VI. That's about it for the sign convention. So now let's get into the second half of this lecture, which is the laws of interconnection. But first, we need some definitions. And uh, be, uh, but then let's look at, so a circuit is essentially an interconnection of circuit elements. I'm not going to use the word lumped circuit because we already discussed last lecture that we are, you, we are using the lumped circuit approximation. So consider the circuit 
shown here, right? So you have, basically it's a box. You don't know what's inside here. So this is a two terminal element. So element one is two terminal. Element two is a three terminal element. Okay. Element three is two terminal. Element four is two terminal. Element five is two terminal. Basically, what uh, consider these as ideal wires connecting them. Now, before we go on, we need a few definitions. Uh, these definitions are stated in the book, so I'm not going to rewrite them, but I'm just going to go through them. So basically, a node is a point in a circuit where two or more circuit elements are interconnected. So these are nodes. So here is a node where three circuit elements, circuit element 2, circuit element 5, circuit element 4 are connected. So A, B, C, D, E are nodes. Okay. A path is a trace of adjoining circuit elements with no element included more than once. So A, B, E is a path. And a closed node sequence is a, is a path whose last node is the same as the starting node. So for example, C, D, E, C is a closed node sequence. A loop is a closed node sequence that traverses only through two terminal circuit elements. For example, A, B, C, D, E, A is a loop. A, B, C, D, E, A is a loop. Okay. A branch is a, uh, is a path that connects two nodes. So A comma B is a branch. And this is a connected circuit because any node can be reached from any other node by traveling, by traversing a path through the circuit elements. So this is a connected circuit. Okay. Having um, uh, given these definitions, having gone through the definitions of a node, path, closed node sequence, loop, connected circuit branch, the concept of a ground is important in the sense that it's, it's simple. People unnecessarily get confused with this. A ground is defined as a reference node and it's picked arbitrarily, arbitrarily for our purposes, uh, to have a value of zero volts. Okay, note that a circuit doesn't need to be connected to ground to work, quote unquote. Think about your cell phones, okay? Now, uh, so basically uh, in this circuit, for example, this is the symbol for a ground, I mean, this is the symbol for a ground node. So let's say node E is ground, then we can talk about uh, the voltage at node A with respect to E, and that's labeled EA, all right? So that's how we define voltages with respect to a ground node. Now, there are two laws of interconnection, which are abbreviated KCL or Kirchhoff's current law. And the other one is KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. But before we talk about Kirchhoff's current law, we need to define a Gaussian surface, which is basically defined as a two-sided surface that has an inside and an outside. So for example, in our circuit, we can, we can consider 
So I'm going to redraw this circuit. So there are our nodes. Whoops. Delete that guy. Here's our nodes. And you'll see why I'm labeling the nodes again. So basically, we can consider this Gaussian surface G1. We can consider this Gaussian surface G2. We can consider this Gaussian surface G3, G4, G5. And then I'll put a Gaussian surface around this node and you'll see why. G6, but basically what we can do is so we chose the Gaussian surface so that it only cuts, it basically cuts only the wires which connect the circuit elements. That's in essential, that's essentially how you choose Gaussian surfaces. But having done this, let us consider, let's arbitrarily assign currents I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, and obviously this is I5, I6, I7, and then I8, but obviously I8 is I1, so I'm just going to put this as I1. So basically at G1, KCL, KCL essentially states the algebraic sum of currents at a Gaussian surface is zero. That means, algebraic means we assign a, uh, we distinguish currents entering from currents leaving. And in the book, we have used the convention that current entering is negative. So I'm gonna follow that. So at G1, we will write minus I1 plus I2 equals zero, okay? So in other words, the current coming in here is equal to the current going out. Okay, so and in other words, the fundamental, this is basically, it's a fundamental law of physics that says that electric charge is conserved. That is, there is no known experiment in which a net electric charge is either created or destroyed. And that's essentially the statement of Kirchhoff's current law. So let's write at G2 uh, what's um, uh, the KCL statement, sorry. So in other words, you have minus I2, I mean I2 entering, you have I3 and I4 leaving. At G3, we essentially have I4 entering, I5 leaving. At G4, we have I5 entering, I6 leaving. Oops. At G5, we have, I, I'll, you'll see why I skipped G6. I1 leaving. So in other words, you can write KCL at nodes as well. So this is KCL at node. So because the Gaussian surface surrounds a node, so you have I6 entering, um, I3 entering, and I7 leaving. Right. So in other words, if you think about current as water flowing through a pipe, basically the sum of the currents entering is equal to the current leaving, right? And so, of course, we really don't know which direction this current is actually flowing. It could be that it's flowing this way. But the bottom line is a consistent set of reference directions that is proper application of reference directions that was emphasized in lecture one and it will be emphasized in this lecture and throughout this book is essential to getting, I mean, to the proper solution, to obtaining a proper solution to the problem. Okay, we are running out of time in the sense we're almost 20 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop here. So in the next lecture, we will actually cover, we'll finish up KCL, KVL, and start two terminal circuit elements. So next lecture, we will wrap up KCL, KVL, uh, and discuss oops, two terminal circuit elements. Start our discussion of two terminal circuit elements. All right. 
I will see you then. <laughs>